living room that I haven't done in over six years. A couple smiles, nods at me, and parts ways as they try to jog past me before congregating again behind me. I think, what's so good about today's morning? They're literally exerting effort to sweat. Then I realize I forgot to tell them not to tell them good morning. They must have thought it was rude or uneducated. Another, another realization of a fallout in my part, this isn't how normal people would respond to a simple salutation, but this isn't what the streets of Chicago taught me. Hey, I guess slide, there's a drive-by. The man in a blue baseball cap pushed me and my two other friends under the bottom of the platform behind the slide. We huddled in a small space that was made for a playhouse. I see my friend Desiree scrunch her eyes shut and, my, and cuffed her hands over her ears, which then my other friend Josie followed. Coming from California, the feeling of confusion came over me. Was this a game I never knew about? At sixth grade, this was my first dose of reality, Chicago's version of reality. With the news stating that Chicago homicide cases outnumber, outnumbers U.S. troops killing in Afghanistan, many have called the city Chirac. In Chirac, to say survival is critical is an understatement. Gang-related crimes and gun violence in particular were the biggest contributors of fears in the city. Any stray bullet could land in your skull at any time. Anyone who mistook your blue uniform to a gang color shirt could leave you unconscious on the floor <coughs> anyone will, and without anyone else willing to help. Precautionary methods were needed to be taken with when stepping in, out into the street. If surviving meant getting holed up in your second floor apartment, trying to get a taste of the world through movies and TV shows, and I survived. <laughs> Nothing will tell you how bad it is in Chirac better than its very own schools. I believe school security were far better than airport security. In my elementary school, every person that entered the school, the school building had to go through metal detectors and had to put their belongings in a gray bin, then push them through an x-ray machine. At sixth grade, Instructors would teach kids to never entertain a, to never entertain a confronting stranger unless they are in law enforcement, always assume that whatever weapon they need a license for, they never got it legally. Be alert for any loud noises or environment changes, and it is imperative to at least to keep at least one self-defense product at your per, at your person at all times. As if nothing was wrong with this whole process, life went on, and so did mine. Hearing the alarm go off at the usual Saturday, 6.30 in the morning, I do the same ritual as everyone else, toothbrush, face wash, and to change ready to a run, for a run. It was chilly spring of April 2009, so the appropriate attire was a plain gray hoodie paired up with another plain gray sweatpants, tired, hair, hair tied onto a French braid, and a pair of headphones hung around my neck. As a seventh grader, Living in Humboldt Park, Chicago, I knew better not to leave the house without protection, especially in this neighborhood. So I grabbed the pepper spray and hid it inside my pocket, finally putting on my shoes in the front door. Seconds after stepping out onto the front porch, there was a distinct commotion, and what happened after flew by like in a blink of an eye. Bang, bang, bang. I knew this all too familiar sound. Bang, bang. The next set of noise directed, gave a clue in the, what direction it is coming from, directed all my attention towards the alleyway behind the, behind the empty lot across the street. I saw a man, middle age, black male, average height. He wore a blue oversized shirt on top of a white oversized long sleeve. Pants were clearly two or three sizes bigger than his, evidently so as he scrambled to keep them up with the cheeks of his butt as he runs. In his hand, I saw a weapon that in my head, I secretly assumed that this man was not trained to have. A gun. He flew over the back gate onto the empty lot and ran towards the front gate. Seconds after seeing him hurdle over the front gate, I spotted another man following him. White, male, middle-aged, in the familiar blue uniform with a badge on his left chest. As he scaled the back gate of this empty lot, I saw the same weapon which explained those loud noises at seven in the morning. Drop your weapon or I'll shoot! The man with the badge hopped off the gate. As the suspect descended from the front gate, 
he raced towards the street that separated the lot he appeared from and the porch I was standing on. I knew this was danger and that I needed to get away from it. A S A E. I felt my heart racing as I swiftly looked for the key that opened the front door. My hands were vigorously shaking as I shifted in between the keys on my keychain, which made it even more difficult to search for the right one. At the corner of my eye, the officer followed, and as he, as he landed onto the street, he took a final stance. Bang! Bang! Ugh! It was the Sussex's last cry, as he fell hard like a sack of rice, forward on the cold concrete floor. Facing the floor, stomach down, was the last thing I witnessed before frantically opening the door to hide back inside, and no Saturdays were the same from that point on. In an effort to keep myself alive, I made the decision that keeping myself in the comfort of my own home increased my chances of surviving. Six years later, my parents proposed moving to San Diego, particularly in Chula Vista. So in February 2014, we did. Unlike Chicago, Chula Vista is rather quiet. I live in an apartment right behind a park, so certain animals would pay some uninvited visits. I thought, although, I thought living in the street and the city of Chicago would train me to sleep through most noise level. Nothing prepared me for this. Chirp! 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 <laughs> Nobody warned me about the birds. They're relentless and unstoppable. I never thought a bird would be the first creature to test the skills I hone in Chicago. Sleeping through most traffic noises, sirens, gunshots, and the uncertain screaming from anyone and everyone were normal in the city. I never thought there would be anything louder than those, but apparently these feathered creatures can take home the, the trophy. <laughs> it took me over a, re over a year to realize the fact that Chula Vista, or the newer Chula Vista, may not be as bad as Chicago. So I decided I would go for the Saturday, Saturday run that I haven't done in over six years. Spring of April 2005, uh, 2015, I was a senior. Unlike spring in Chicago, spring in San Diego is warm. <clears throat> I chose to wear black half leggings, a sleeveless training top with, a br with bright red gym shoes. I pulled my hair up into a high ponytail and plugged in a pair of headphones. I start to set off on my 30 minute run to the park behind my house. When I get to the sidewalk, right outside the gates, the couple jogs towards my direction. I try to deviate my eyes to avoid eye contact, but it's too late for the woman and I catch each other's line of sight. As I see her face muscles move to create a smile, I thought, damn it. 